Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays But Biden It Doesn't. So anyway, we stopped to get some atole, delicious, absolutely delicious, and some uh, sopa de hongos, some mushroom soup. And I couldn't help but notice this uh, massive patch of salvia. Looks like salvia fulgens at the base of this very enormous uh, Abies religiosa. This is uh, the genus Abies, the genus of quote-unquote Christmas trees. You can see they get quite, quite large here at about 10,000 feet on the uh, side of this active volcano. So let's take a look at this salvia species. You can see this red tubular flower indicates a uh, hummingbird pollination. Which of course, remember when it uh, it's a little too chilly in the morning uh, at these high elevations for insects to get, uh, get active. Insects will pollinate this, but the main pollinators of these are gonna be the hummingbirds. So the hummingbird pollination has been a selection pressure directing the evolutionary trajectory, como se dice, of this beautiful goddamn plant. You can actually pull these, uh, those corollas, this is a bunch of petals fused together into a tube, and this is the calyx, distinct salvia calyx. You can pull that corolla out of that calyx and uh, suck on the back of it, and you got some nectar in there, and of course that's what's, that's what's attracting the hummingbirds in the first place. But uh, these salvias have a very interesting uh, stamen structure. You got two stamens inside, you can see right there, Inside that little cuculate hood, you got the two anthers right there, two stamens, two anthers, and the style is up top, kind of pokes out. Okay, way to get dust with pollen, but they, these uh, stamens, as many of the high elevation neotropical cloud forest uh, salvias have, they have a little lever mechanism at the base there, kind of acting like a little bird dipper. You know, it was like bird dipping toys that maybe they were popular in the 80s. I forget where I seen them, like just a kind of useless chingadera. A useless little fucking thing you'd see on someone's desk. But in this case, the hummingbird goes in there to get the nectar at the base of that flower. Its head hits those little paddles, which then causes those stamens to pop down out of that hood and douse the hummingbird's head with uh, the pollen. It causes those uh, stamens and anthers to come down out of that hood and douse the hummingbird's head with the pollen. Look at the goddamn trichomes on this species, too. Wonderful garden plant where you can grow it, where it's not hot as balls, which, of course, is not, not in Texas. You can't grow this uh, salvia species in Texas. <laughs> it would fucking hate it, okay? I mean, the temperature here is it's like Pacific Northwest and it's raining every day. Very high rainfall. Look at that beautiful goddamn, it's a Capressus uh, lusitanica, Hesperocypris lusitanica, redwood family. Look at it. Ah, oh, it's the massive, beautiful beast of a fucking cypress tree, of a new world cypress. Anyway, there you go. Salvia fulgens. This is a great salvia species, one of many at these high elevations, which is pollinated by hummingbirds. Check out these massive bracts too. Look at that, those rosy red bracts you get subtending flowers, kind of protecting them before the flowers, the new flowers emerge. These of course are done. You'll have four seeds inside that little calyx. Well, it sounds like a goddamn lawnmower driving by me. Anyway, beautiful calyx, whole fucking salvia family. You got the opposite leaves of course too, and you got that minty smell. Great fucking genus, the salvias. Look at this, had to come over here, take a look at this goddamn cypress. Look at that beautiful trunk, beautiful buttress trunk, uh, keeping it structurally intact and sound. You can see they're getting quite large. They look kind of like the Monterey cypresses you see in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. But of course we have a much different species, which hails from a much different habitat. Beautiful patch of uh, ribes, AKA the gooseberries or currants, currants from Grossulariaceae is the family right there, right, uh, right at the base of it. See those? Distinct leaves, edible fruits on those. They're also the host plant for a rust fungus which kills pines. Look at that, just covered in a goddamn like in little soccer ball cones up top. Could you see those see little soccer balls just open, just freely open uh, once they're mature. They're not mature yet, they're blue. They're covered in a waxy freena and then they, uh, the cones dry out and drop the seeds. Very important plant. Lumber's, uh, lumber's not too good for building. But it does smell nice. You could use it for some shingles or something, I guess. I don't know. They do grow fast, though, and they love... Look at how wet this goddamn forest is. Look at how how, how moist. Ah! Oh, fucking bang. You get Rodana over there, too. Asteraceae is the family. Penstem and Roseus over here. Can't get enough of these high elevation forests, you know? Again, you can thank that Cocos plate and that subduction zone. For the elevation here, that's what's that's what's creating the Mexican trans volcanic belt. All these volcanoes, beautiful penstemon species, also indicating uh, hummingbird pollination. Well, I'm sure other insects can get in there. You know, if they wake once they wake up out of their slumber a little bit, 
but the hummers are going to be doing the majority of this. Anytime you see that red tubular flower. These beautiful abies forests, look at it. Fucking gorgeous. These are sacred goddamn forests, I'm telling you. Dude. Oh, it smells so good, so verdant, so green. So I got that shit on the dash, you can't see out the window too well. And then I uh, pulled off on the side of the road to look at this marvelous species of dame salvia right here. Let's take a look at this. It's getting kind of chilly. We're at about 11,000 feet now. Of course, you got those opposite leaves. Beautiful texture to the uh, top of those leaves. You got the fuzz in what the shit. Look at those tiny hairs and that leaf texture on the uh, abaxial surface. But let's take a look at that flower first, okay? I think you got a beautiful fucking, look at that massive hummingbird. God damn it, where'd he go? You hear the thing? He's chirping down there. Doing his duty. Again, plenty of hummingbird, hummingbird pollinated species of salvia. This one's no exception. Okay, you got that red, red tubular flower on the other species. This one, you got a purple one. And you got kind of a dark purple calyx. Not enough light to zoom in like that, unfortunately. But you, let's take a look at what's going on. Look at the, that throat. Look at the the bottom of that throat. See, it's got those, again, they got those those uh, lever mechanisms on those stamens, which uh, the little paddles that the hummingbird hits with his little, uh, his little beak, causing those anthers to dip down out of that hood and dust its head with pollen. But these are just, they smell divine. They're offering plenty of nectar for the birds. You see that fucking hummingbird? It was a pretty big hummingbird, it was like that big. You know, with the little white tail, just incredible. You get this massive clump, too. They root really easily. So, if you know, we used to grow a bunch of these species. And I lived in coastal California. Root them really easy. Okay, just make clones and offsets. Give them to your friends. Fucking light up a garden. And you're getting tons of hummers in there, too. Maybe the bees would try to hit them, too. But I think the bees might have a hard time getting inside there. Uh, you know, and also, I mean, I guess they're probably going for the pollen. I don't know. I mean, either way. Salvia is an incredible genus, and it's had a, a very large diversification in, uh, in the neotropics over there. There's that the salvia fulgens down there. That hummer won't let me get close, but you can see you got a massive, you got a massive patch of it. I wonder if that's all the same plant or quite a few in, different individuals. Well, somebody dumped a chair over there. Maybe you need a chair. So anyway, there's that. They like selected a flower. There's that little paddle. So hummingbird beak hits that, causes those those uh, anthers to come down, dust the uh, hummer's head with the pollen. And a lot of these high elevation salvias have that. Pretty ingenious. And you get that style, of course, in the middle. So two stamens, generally four seeds, and a bilaterally symmetrical flowers with a little hood. Yeah, there's some there's some goddamn amazing salvias in Colombia. High elevation Andean salvias are some real nice ones. From what I can tell, the bee pollinated salvia species don't have that little lever. Might be wrong, but when I've looked at any of the bee pollinated ones, the like the lowland, some of the lowland California ones, you know. That uh, don't have the red, the red color, the purple color, or uh, you know, you just see primarily bees pollinating them. You cut them open, they don't have that little paddle, that little lever mechanism. It's the little shovey they could. Okay, we're getting hail and rain up here at 12,000 feet. A little hairy, a little bit. Oh, you don't, you don't have to turn off the uh, inner city phone. We can put that thing down. Okay, a little higher up the mountain. I, I don't know what the hell elevation we're at now. Maybe 13,000 feet. You could see the Molenbergia. This grass has just come to dominate everything, along with the, uh, this uh, Pinus harwegii. So you got a overstory Pinus harwegii, understory of this grass, the Smolenbergia. Got some very cool uh, Hummer pollinated Senecios right here. Senecios, of course, tend to be somewhat uh, unenthralling sometimes. All right, kind of, you know, leaves that almost look like lettuce, uh, but uh, this is a hummingbird pollinated one. As you can see, the flowers aren't open because it's uh, chilly and wet. You also got this uh, massive lupin, lupinus montanus. See that? Look, you got a, they're already maturing into little bean pods right there. And then there's that spike of just, just fucking marvelous flowers. Look at that. Giant kind of gullet shaped uh, uh, wings and keel down there. And then that banner petal is uh, folded. What a banger, huh? It can get quite big. The leaves too, look at that. Look how massive those are. And another common species up at these heights, a common genus in Western North America, Penstemon. This is Penstemon gentianoides. You can see they get fucking massive. Real showy bastards. And of course, you got those styles left over from the post mature flowers after the corolls have fallen off. Bilaterally symmetrical. And then look at the, look at those anthers up on the roof of that, the, that corolla right there. And then there's a beard tongue, that staminotus. Sterile stamen with the fuzzy shit on it. 
looking kind of obscene. I'm giving them the common name Beard Tug, and then you got that style right there in the middle. Look at that. How about that? What's, well, there's a guy in there, probably hiding out from the rain. Who's in there? What's he doing? Lance that leaves just a massive, massive bastard of a plant waterfall. Probably grow it out in the Pacific Northwest. They'd probably love it. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.